Are you a professional artist or designer who wants to use the latest generative AI tools like Stable Diffusion with minimum effort and, and maximum, maximum power? power? Well, I'm here to help. Grab a cup of coffee. I'm gonna show you how to install Invoke AI and we'll dig around and play around today on Building Dreams. It's hot. This episode of Building Dreams is brought to you by the Everly Heights Patreon. Support the project and get access to custom tools and stable diffusion models we're using to build Everly Heights at patreon.com slash Everly Heights. And by StreamYard. Use it like I am to bring your streams to life. Get $10 at free credit by signing up at streamyard.everlyheights.tv. Hey, it's Bill Meeks here for Building Dreams, where I help you use the latest AI technology to build dreams of your own, just like I'm using them to build the first cartoon set in my Everly Heights universe, a sitcom called Very Special. A couple weeks back, I chatted with Invoke AI founder Kent Kiersey about his generative AI art tool for professional artist Invoke AI. This program combines the power of stable diffusion with professional workflows and a clean, intuitive, elegant UI. Today, I'll take you through installing Invoke AI on Windows, adding your existing stable diffusion models to Invoke, and we'll take a quick spin around the program to show off some features. But first, there are a few technical requirements. To run Invoke on Windows, you'll need an NVIDIA-based graphics card with at least 4 gigabytes of VRAM, or 8 gigabytes of VRAM if you want to run the latest and greatest version of Stable Diffusion called SDXL. Otherwise, you'll be constrained to a year's worth of Stable Diffusion 1.5 tools, which, you know, still ain't a bad deal. Also, if you have an AMD card, you can run Invoke on Linux, but not Windows. So this tutorial will be kind of useless to you. You'll also need at least 12 gigabytes of RAM, which isn't much, so you should be okay, and at least 18 gigabytes of free hard drive space, although I'd recommend at least twice that once you download all the models you want and get everything set up. It's going to take up quite a bit of space. You'll also want to check that you have the right version of Python installed. You'll need at least 3.10 or 3.11. Now, if you want to check this yourself, just go to your Start menu, type CMD, and hit Enter. And then from here, just go ahead and type Python, dash, dash, and then version. And you'll see I have 3.10.6, which means Invoke should run fine on my system. If you aren't running the right version, you can get the right version at python.org slash downloads. And uh, you can go ahead and download Python uh, 3.12 it's on now. Although, you know, sometimes it can be a little futzy. Just go ahead and get 3.10 or 3.11. Now, if you have to install Python fresh, make sure to check the box that says add Python to path. That way, Invoke AI will be able to find uh, your Python install without any extra setting manipulation. Now, if you don't already have the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable uh, from 2015 to 2022, those libraries installed, you'll need to also install that. If you don't know that you have them installed, you probably don't. It's okay though, the link to download them is right down in the description. They're right on this webpage. Now that we have these requirements installed, it's finally time to install Invoke AI. First, go to the Invoke AI GitHub page, link in the description, and download the installer. So we'll scroll down here to the latest version. Invoke provides an automated installer, which should hopefully work for our purposes. We'll click that and download it. Oh, look, it came into the folder where we meant for it to. Let's go ahead and click Save. And then we have it in here, so we'll right click on it, Save Zip, Extract to here, then double click. Now go ahead and install it somewhere on your computer. I'm gonna put it in the same folder that I have Auto1111 and ComfyUI installed in. Now we just need to double click on install.bat. Then go ahead and click any key uh, to continue and you'll have, to, there'll be a lot of waiting in this process. So you'll see a lot of uh, jump cuts from me. Okay, now it says here to go ahead and click win long path enabled reg, which is a red Windows registry file uh, to go ahead and get things set up for invoke. I'm pretty sure I have this enabled already, but I'll go ahead and double click there and 
registry file just in case. And yes, we want to continue. And those have been successfully added to the registry. OK, and we've already installed the Microsoft uh, Visual C++ library. So now we just need to set up where we're going to install it. If you want to, you can go ahead and install it in the default folder, which is uh, users, bill, invoke AI. But I try and keep all of my AI programs off of my main drive. So I'm going to go ahead and change the location here. So click N. And then it'll ask you where you want to install it. And it'll put the folder it's running from by default. I have it in a production folder. So I'll go ahead and just delete all that. And then I'll just Control-V. And there's the folder I want them to install it in. So let's go ahead and click Enter. And then it says that the folder already exists. That's because I already created a folder called Invoke AI, and that'll be fine. Go ahead and overwrite that. And now again, we have to wait, uh, which is why I have a big old cup of coffee here. OK, now the installer wants us to select the type of GPU we have. I personally have an NVIDIA GPU that supports CUDA. And again, you're limited to an NVIDIA GPU. So really, it's just um, between the top two. Or if you're experimenting and you're a coder developer or something and you want to mess around with it, uh, you might be able to get it working on your GPU. So since I have an NVIDIA GPU, I'm just going to go ahead and hit 1 and then hit Enter. Now again, uh, same reason I have a cup of coffee. we got to wait for some installs to happen. Okay, well, it's done. Uh, now it's going to ask us if we want to do an automatic, uh, not automatic one, 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 uh, but an automatic configuration where it just kind of gets the base models it usually works with, and you can set everything up later. Um, I'm actually coming from an auto one, 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 one install, so I want to kind of sync things up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do a manual configuration. So let's go ahead and here to the manual configuration and hit M. OK, so first off, it's going to give us an option here in a couple minutes to download some models from Hugging Face. If you want to do that, uh, you'll need to get a Hugging Face token here at huggingface.co slash settings slash tokens. Pretty sure I have one. Just control click that link. And uh, I do have one. So I'll go ahead and copy that token to my clipboard. And then I'll come back to my install window. And uh, control shift V to paste it. Now, as for this other stuff, I'm not sure what it's uh, doing here, but we can always change these settings later in the installed program. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave all this default for now. Just tab through it with your down button. OK, and I do want to save my images out to a separate folder because I have one folder uh, that's hooked up to a database of every image I've ever made with Stable Diffusion in Auto 111 and Comfy. So I want to add Invoke to that list. So. I'll just come over here and copy the path to my folder and then come back into the install, backspace it all, and then control shift V to paste it. And then that auto import folder is fine. And we'll go ahead and accept uh, the Creative ML responsible AI license, uh, which is always a nice thing. So go ahead and then tab down with your down and click next by hitting space or enter. Now, this will give you some options for models to install by default. I'm going to uncheck most of these because I already have these on my computer. I'll go ahead and just leave the SDXL VAE fix one in there just uh, to kind of show how it does it. Now, once it's installed, I can go ahead and go in and add all my custom models and everything. But I'm just going to go ahead and go through these menus here. And I'm just going to grab all of the control net stuff because these files aren't too big. And I'm just going to grab everything. And all the IP adapters. And as for LoRa's and uh, TI embeddings, I don't really uh, need any of those. And again, I have them on my computer from Auto 1111. So I'll go ahead and link those up uh, once we get into the program here. So apply changes and exit.
Now it's just going to go through here and download some upscaling models, which again, I already have on my computer. I could probably just link them up, but I want to do just a full fresh install uh, outside of my models folder and my Laura folder. Okay, and once it's done installing, uh, you'll go to the folder where you installed it here and just double click on invoke.bat. It'll ask you what you want to do, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and click one to run the browser-based interface. And then you can just click this link here with while holding down control and invoke AI will launch in the browser. Uh, so we have it installed. Now you'll see no models available here. That's because I already have a bunch of models installed. Okay, so to add the models I already have on my system, we'll just come to model manager here and then import models. And then we'll get the path where you have your models stored. Mine happens to be in a folder called SD models, if you can believe it. Then we'll go ahead and paste that in. And I'm not sure what the prediction type is, uh, so I don't think we need to worry about it. So we'll just go ahead and add models. And it looks like it ran into some issues with a couple of my models, but so far it looks like it's going okay. Okay, and you'll see here it imported all of my models. Okay, well, now to make sure everything's working, we're just going to try a couple prompts here. Uh, first of all, I thought this might be fun. Superman drinking beer, a beer at a bar. And we're going to just try this with a 1.5 model. Um, we'll go ahead and make four of them. And uh, we'll keep, we'll use U Euler Ancestral. And then we'll make these just simple one by one images, 512 by 512. Nothing too fancy. Let's go ahead and click invoke. If we come back here to the command window, you, you can watch it run. I love the animation of the images coming to fruition, uh, the, the pixely kind of fading in. That's fun. Very nice. We have four very different supermen drinking four very different beers at very different bars. This this looks a lot like Brandon Routh, who was Superman in uh, Superman Returns, uh, one of my favorite uh, Superman ones. So that's how to install Invoke AI, stable diffusion for professional creatives. Would you like to see me do some in-depth tutorials as I harness this tool to help me create my Everly Heights universe? Well, let me know in the comments. You can also check out my full interview with the founder of Invoke AI, Kent Kiersey, here on my YouTube channel, or as a bonus episode on the Stable Denusian podcast feed, available everywhere all fine podcasts are indexed. Okay, well that about does it for this episode. See you next time, and keep dreaming. Read the stories and join the team at everlyheights.tv. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Everly Heights. Watch us build Everly Heights in building dreams by subscribing to at Bill Meeks LA on YouTube. Get access to the custom stable diffusion models we're using to build Everly Heights, as well as our morning meeting production diary by supporting us at patreon.com slash Everly Heights. Reptar and Miyagi-Do.